I'm going to begin in 2002, before I ever took office. I went to Washington, D.C. for what you might call governor's school. The national economy was in terrible shape, and the Oregon economy was just as bad or worse. The legislative legislature needed five special sessions that year just to balance the budget. Coverage for low-income citizens on the Oregon Health Plan came close to extinction, and cuts to public school funding forced early closures, larger classes, and elimination of programs. At governor's school, the facilitator said, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is that you are taking office at the bottom of a deep recession caused by the bursting of the dot-com bubble. The facilitator's good news was this. Most of us would serve eight years in office, and any governor who serves eight years usually has to deal with one, and we were told in only one, recession. <laughs> He told us that we were getting ours in the beginning of our tenure and it would be clear sailing for the rest of our time as governor. But, as we all know, instead of a one and done recession, we ended up with three years of loss and recovery, followed by two years of gain and growth, followed by three years of loss. And it's what is likely to be a slow and challenging recovery. Although the last eight years have been economically difficult in ways that were hard to imagine when I first took office in the years since 2003, we've accomplished much and learned even more. To accomplish our goal of building a better origin, we diversified our economy, invested in renewable energy and green technology, and budgeted not just for today, but for the future. We provided every Oregon child up to age 19 with access to health care and required health insurance companies to provide the same coverage for mental health as they do for physical health. We increased our commitment to early childhood education by providing more funding for Head Start, Early Head Start, and this past February created a birth to three early childhood education program. We changed Oregon's student financial aid to a shared responsibility model that has reached thousands of new students in our community colleges and universities. We reformed the public employee retirement system, eliminating a $17 billion unfunded liability and creating a surplus. If we hadn't reformed the system in 2003, with the market losses sustained in the last recession, many local governments would be in bankruptcy today. Over the last seven and one half years, we invested between four and five billion dollars in our transportation infrastructure, creating thousands of family wage jobs for Oregonians. And we invested hundreds of millions more in airports, seaports, rail, and public transportation through a program called Connect Oregon. We've learned from the past as we've invested in the future. Oregon has important advantages that will allow us to do better than most other states as the national economy starts to recover. First, our location on the West Coast gives us easy access to the Pacific Rim and the growing economies of Asia. Second, our population is relatively small, as is the size of our government giving us an open and transparent government that is able to innovate, collaborate, and respond to new challenges. The people of Oregon are not afraid of change. At the same time, we have abundant energy supplies, skilled workers, and the proven ability to get things done. And third, Oregon is a magnet for young creative people who want to live in a state that treasures our natural resources and invests in art and culture, even in difficult economic times. So yes, the last seven years were anything but a one and done recession. But we invested wisely, focused on providing opportunity, and kept our fiscal house in order. I say that while being the first to acknowledge that 10.5% unemployment is unacceptable. 
That's why I will continue to do everything in my power as governor, from marketing our exports to creating incentives for green technology companies to locate here, to helping our small businesses innovate and grow, to fighting for every federal dollar available to bring that unemployment rate number down. But I want you to know that more than anything else, our investments in education, transportation, health care, and culture are the long-term solutions to high unemployment and the path to a robust economic recovery. What is the biggest threat to that robust recovery? Large budget deficits that have already hit many other states. Bob Herbert of the New York Times wrote this about California. Budget officials travel the state with a glazed look in their eyes and have tried everything they can think of to balance the state budget. And still, the deficits persist. We are not like any other state that is cutting health care, school aid, or support for families in crisis. And this is not a coincidence, nor is it dumb luck. When Oregon's economy was growing, we saved and invested. And when the economy fell victim to the business cycle and bad behavior on Wall Street, we preserved and even expanded services that other states are now cutting or eliminating. For example, other states are cutting children from their health plans. We expanded coverage to all children and added more low-income adults. Other states exhausted their unemployment funds and are taking loans from the federal government. We're extending unemployment benefits on our own dime. Other states are cutting their investments in transportation. We're expanding and accelerating ours. Other states are limiting enrollments in their colleges and universities. We're educating more students and retraining more workers than ever in Oregon's history. In the decade ahead, states will be judged by their ability to keep their fiscal house in order. While educating their citizens, fostering innovation and creativity in their economies, and delivering critical social services to their citizens. Oregon is passing that test. And here are some of the reasons why. Many states are still trying to balance their budgets for the fiscal year beginning July 1. We have a balanced budget for the next 15 months, and we balance our budget the Oregon way without expecting additional federal stimulus dollars. In 2007, we created a rainy day fund and worked with the business community to divert the carpet kicker into that fund. Last year, hospitals and health insurers came to the table and agreed to put more money of their, of more of their own money into our health care system which is how we will be able to cover all children and more adults. At the same time, state employees agreed to take furloughs and pay freezes. We've made cuts and found new efficiencies, reducing the cost of state government by almost $2 billion in the latest budget period compared to the service levels projected before the recession. Our planning, saving, targeted investments, and commitment to shared sacrifice that grew out of the 2003 recession enabled us to navigate the 2009 recession in a way that neighboring states have not. They focused on their July budget deadlines. We're focused on next year and the decade ahead. But I must be candid. Our focus on that future comes with new risks. Even with economic recovery, Oregon will face budget challenges in the future that may limit the state's ability to meet its core responsibilities of education, human services, and public safety. That's why I describe the state of our state this way. Skies clearing and a potential storm brewing. 